Well, let's talk about NXT. Yay. You know, the thing with this show is the 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 good workers have good matches. And uh, the non-wrestlers, they practice all week. And then, like, on a good night, it's all right. On a bad night, it ain't all right. And, uh, you know, that, that, I mean, it would be fine. But, like, if you've been following this whole NIL recruitment deal i mean the future of the show is more matches like nikita lions and lash legend did you guys watch this match it wasn't bad okay it certainly was not good but what it was was uh two very very green and i will call them non-wrestlers because they're not learning to wrestle they're they're learning to choreograph performances they are sports entertainers through and through they uh, they practice a match for a long time, and then they get in there live, and then they try. And uh, there was a spot in this match that was so funny where they both start hitting the ropes, and they both forgot what they're supposed to do. So literally, they're crisscrossing like the Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan, but going the same direction, and they're yelling at each other as they cross to try to tell each other what, what they're supposed to be doing. I was dying. And... Uh, I just watched a show and I thought, and I know that USA Network, uh, yeah, I'm sure they want the show live, right? But this show absolutely should not be live. <laughs> this is a developmental show with green non-wrestlers who have to practice their matches and then go out there and like do their best. This absolutely, positively, needs to be a taped show if it's going to be on national television. But it's live, and so we get funny moments like this. So, you know, they did the match. Nikita Lyons won with a big kick. And the announcers just, you know, put over that Twitter's exploding every time Nikita Lyons is on TV. And, I mean, it's just so, uh, just so whatever it is. I mean, that's what this show is. And then we had uh, Tony D'Angelo supposed to face Zion Quinn, who, uh, who I guess was out of action due to injury, and so he gets uh, set up for a match with Von Wagner, which at least, actually, even then, I don't know who was supposed to be the baby face. Exactly. I guess nobody. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> then we had uh, Roderick Strong is upset that the Creed brothers keep failing, and so uh, he has brought the Viking Raiders from the main roster. They will be facing the Creed brothers next week, which actually could be a fun match. We had Von Wagner and Tony D'Angelo, and this match was all right. I mean, Tony D'Angelo's had, I mean, at this point, it's probably, I swear to God, like 12 matches. And uh, yeah. for a guy with 12 matches, he's doing really good. So, you know, this was not like, uh, you're not getting a five-star match or anything close, but it was fine. And then, uh, you know, uh, Legato Del Fantasma showed up, and there was a distraction, Escobar took out D'Angelo's knee with a crowbar. D'Angelo sells and sells. He finally jumps in the ring to break up the count. He gets kicked and pinned by Von Wagner. I mean, the way this was worked, it was like Tony D'Angelo is supposed to be a babyface. But, like, later in the show, you know, Legato Del Fantasma were babyfaces. But I think they're all heels. I am so baffled watching this show. We had a Toxic Attraction segment with uh rock the former roxy she'll always be the former roxy to me this set up a match with mandy rose tonight i thought for sure they'd do gg dolan next because she beat jc jane last week but no it's just this week it's gonna be uh it's gonna be mandy rose fallon henley uh they're gonna be doing a uh a match later a, a six person with uh legato and that one woman who we just cannot identify, and they never identify her. They never give us her name. She walked by, and uh, Brooks Jensen, uh, he's all distracted, you know, because he's got some problems down there. And uh, he was yelled at for that. We had Grayson Waller. So they got this guy, Nathan Frazier, from NXT UK. He's supposed to debut. And Grayson Waller comes out, and he interrupts the debut, and he starts cutting this promo, and he starts burying Nathan Frazier for having a, a horrible haircut. And, you know, here's the thing, everybody. When you're a baby face, and the heel's telling you that your haircut sucks, and with all due respect 
your haircut sucks, it might be time to get a new haircut. So uh, then, for some reason, uh, Andre Chase and Bodie Hayward, which is a great name, it's one of the rare great names in this company, they're in the crowd, and then they get in the ring, and they distract Grayson, and then, you know, Nathan Frazier jumps off the top with a dropkick and then does a bunch of spots. So I guess... I guess Chase University are baby faces, but I don't know why. And and uh, Nathan Frazier is now aligned with them. And uh, he's a you know what this is for those of you that watched before you, before uh, y'all gave up. What they're doing with Nathan Frazier, it is exactly what they did with Kurt Stallion. Exactly. Oh no! Except Nathan Frazier has a, a much worse haircut. He hasn't had anywhere near as cool of a promo as the Stallion did. You remember that? Oh, I remember. Remember right. those acting chops he had when he was laid don't, out on don't the Don't think I don't remember any of this. Guys, guys remember in like, uh, it was about 2001 or so, Shawn Michaels had been gone for a while, and then there was like one show where he came back and he decided he was going to cut his hair to here and Dutch straight boy. all the way around. Page yes. boy. God. <laughs> well, that's what this Nathan Frazier has done. I don't know what he was thinking in 2022. By the way, the former Ben Carter, for everybody out there who does not watch NXT. Yeah, Ben. Get a Ben Carter haircut. Whatever that would be. And then we had Katana Chance and Caden Carter versus Ulyssa Leon and Valentina Faraz. And uh, what's so funny? <laughs> the the, the road twerkers? Warriors, well, the Road Warriors neon uh, whatever the hell it was, shoulder pads that they had on that they came out with. So I don't know. I, I cannot figure out this Ulyssa Leon and Valentina Faraz thing here because first off, their gimmick is that they're they're they just you know they do a lot of shaking. <laughs> they do a lot of shaking. Okay, and then right. one of them, I think it's Ulyssa Leon. Okay, this just I, I mean here it's just weird. <laughs> the way she moves in the ring is like. It's totally wrong, okay? Everything she does when she moves looks totally wrong, but her stuff looks good, and she can actually kind of work. Well, what do you mean by that for the, the layman out there who's never been in the ring before? Just like, you know, stands up too tall, and everything looks totally unnatural and awkward, but she still manages to pull everything off. I, I can't even explain it. It's just like, it's so weird. But I was watching the match, and at the beginning, it's like all they're doing is just shaking their ass, and moving weird, and I'm just watching this thing going, what? But then, like, as the match kept getting, by the end, it was actually a good match. So, I don't know. I, I just, I, I this, it leaves me with, I just, I have no words, except somehow they had a really good match. I don't know about really good, but it was good. And, uh, yeah, that was that. Legato del Fantasma. So, uh, old J, old BJ Ugh. gets beat up in the back, and uh, the baby faces pr presume it's Legato del Fantasma. But we later find out that it was actually Von Wagner who was uh, sent to beat him up because he'd been uh, rubbernecking on the woman who they don't identify. That's what happened. So it ended up being two on three. And this was also a good match because you got Legato Del Fantasma in there. And uh, they're they're very, very good. And Fallon Henley, I mean, she's, she's not bad. And Josh Briggs is, you know, he's every big man they've ever had on this show. I mean, you can rattle off every big man tag team partner they've had from, you know, I've already forgotten all of their names, but... Uh, Tucker, you know, all these guys. He's he's exactly like all of them, but he's he's fine. He's perfectly serviceable, and this match was good. And, uh, of course, they got beaten because it was uh, it was three on two, but, you know, that match was totally fine. Solo Soko and Trick Williams, I mean, wasn't very good. Trick Williams is very, very green. And uh, the funniest thing about this match is they have Cameron Grimes on commentary. Cameron Grimes is a great promo. I have no idea what was going on on commentary. His commentary was not good at all, and the weirdest thing was, I don't even know if he was doing it on purpose or or what, but, like, he had all of these cliches, and he would begin the cliche, but the end of the cliche, he'd get it wrong. 
<laughs> it was just like one after another. I listened to this whole thing. I was like, what is happening here? <laughs> and then he got in the ring afterwards, and uh, Sokoa tried to super kick Hayes. He ducked, and so he hit Grimes. And uh, they're doing a three-way next week. We had a great segment with Nervous Malik Blade and Edris Anofi trying to give him a pep talk. These two guys are great. They are good. <laughs> but they got killed by the Viking Raiders. That was a that was a fun little match there. We had a vignette with Wes Lee on the beach. He's he's all sad about what happened, but he can't tell you what happened or mention his partner's name or tell you anything. So given he could give you no information, it was a pretty good promo. And then we had uh, Mandy Rose. and <laughs> Dad went to the liquor store, never came home. That's what happened here, I guess. <laughs> Mandy Rose and Roxy was the main event. And uh, <laughs> it was it was all right. Uh, you know, Roxanne Perez, she's in the ring at this point. I mean, she was carrying this match with Mandy. I don't know what's going on with Mandy. I, I don't like to say bad things about people, but her promos and her work. Like, this is where she was years ago. There's been no improvement over all of these years. I don't know if she doesn't care or what, but she won, so they beat Roxanne, which I couldn't even believe. And Maybe after she's the, just leveled out in, her, in their system. After the break, we'll talk more. Observer Live. Ah, glad to see all the praise for my NXT reporting here, so I'll continue on. By the way, throughout the show, they've got uh, video packages for all of these women that will be in the uh, new the breakout tournaments coming up. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, man, this tournament. <laughs> These gimmicks. Alexandra York is back. Talk about putting something out from 35 years ago. We got <laughs> Sloan Jacobs. She's going to be there. And, Sloan. Uh, Look at some of these other names that they've got. Kiana James. Uh, who else do they have? Alba Fire. She explains it like she has she old, spins fire around now or something like that. That's why she's at. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I I know. Well, she had a stick she was dragging across the ground, wasn't she? Uh, may have been. Anyway, after that uh, Mandy Rose match, uh, she won, and then Wendy Chu showed up, and she was going to... Shoot him with a super so. I, I, I actually, I gotta, I gotta. Yeah, please. Why please. do you guys not watch this show? So, Make me. Mandy Rose to. beats Roxanne. And then, as the heels are celebrating, Wendy Chu shows up in her pajamas with a super soaker. She tries to spray the heels with water, but they go running. And they stop on the ramp to go, ha ha, we're too far away for you to get us with that water. And Wendy Chu has a device, and she goes, Kachunk! and a net falls from the ceiling to capture the heels on the ramp. They attempt to get out of the ramp, but it, or the, the whatever, the net, but it takes just long enough for Wendy Chu Jesus. and Perez to shoot them with a silly string. <laughs> I'm not making a second of that up. She's got a long career in the 24-7 division coming up, doesn't she? So spring break in his next week. Nathan Frazier will spring face Grayson break. Waller. Have you made fun of this name yet? Eh, who cares? <laughs> Natty and Lash Legend face Cora Jade and Nikita Lyons, the few that will never die. <laughs> the Viking Raiders versus the Creed Brothers. Cameron Grimes versus Solo Sokoa and Carmelo Hayes. Tony D'Angelo and Santos Escobar in a sit-down meeting. They're advertising that in case you're <laughs> thinking about skipping the show. <laughs> And Braun Breaker against Joe Gacy. You want to talk about that final segment more? Braun Breaker versus Joe Gacy would be, in the words of Cameron Grimes, a main event in any arena in this arena. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seriously going to go back and listen to that whole segment and try and figure out what was going on there. <laughs> Oh, my God. Then you know, we, we should actually take a list of the people that are on this show and actually just divide them on a piece of paper on baby faces and heels and see how many names actually fill up. Because for all the things we said about heels there, and I know she's teaming with Natty, but are Lash Legend and Nikita Lyons at this point both baby faces? And at some point, does it feel like they're going to be a tag team? Well, I think Lash Legend is a heel. And uh, they may eventually, yes, you know, begrudgingly become a tag team. Can you so, imagine the team names they're going to come up with? Can I get through this two? stupid main event so I can stop talking about this show? 
Sorry. Joe Gacy comes down to the ring, and he is surrounded by all of his uh, <laughs> druids. Because now Joe Gacy, and it's never been explained, now he has druids. And Harlan has vanished. We don't know where Harlan went. He disappeared. But who needs Harlan when you got two dozen druids? So he's got all these druids around in the ring, and he's cutting a promo on Braun Breaker. And he says that Braun Breaker is not medically clear to defend the title, and so he's just going to be the champion. Rick Steiner appears. Yes, Rick Steiner. And he comes down the aisle, and he gets in the ring. And uh, Joe Gacy said, you made a big mistake coming here, Rick Breaker. And all the druids get up on the apron, and so, you know, Rick's in big trouble because, like, they're going to suck his blood next. But then the music of Braun Breaker hits, and... uh, he is actually great. He comes down, he's killing druids. He's just clothesline, clothesline, boom! He's just killing all these druids. And uh, and then he gets in the ring, and Gacy lays him out. And so he's down, and then uh, his belt has been left in the aisle. So the last the last two minutes of show, the show, seriously, the druid at the end of the line, he picks up the belt, he gives it to the next druid. That druid gives it to the next druid. That druid gives it, and they just all the way down the aisle up into the ring, and they finally give it to Joe Gacy. And the announcer after that creeped out. that They uh, transported the belt to the ring one druid at a time. And that's how the show goes off the air. It's a guilty pleasure, everybody. You know you want to watch this pleasure. show. Pleasure? <laughs> you know you want to watch this show every week. I guess for some, S&M is, is pleasure. Nipple clamps are pleasure. So they, What know. are we talking about? It's a television show. There was some <laughs> With... decent stuff on it. Malcolm Bivens giving a dirty look to Roderick Strong. Yeah, he was great. And Ivy Nile is on the, on the outside right now. And Creed Brothers... Interesting, you know, they've been playing up Malcolm Bivens as a baby face. He can do a promo either way. They haven't really defined him. It's just that people have taken to him in a certain way and the Creed brothers. It'll be interesting to see if he sticks with them, which I would like to see, or if he ends up going with Roderick Strong since it looks like they're going to be breaking everybody up here, or at least maybe having some new new members of the Diamond Mine possibly if the Creed brothers leave the uh, group. And Vinny has driven all the way here, and his camera's not working. Oh, cool. Classic. It's pointing at the back of the TV. All Riveting. right. Yep, we go that way. Uh, nope, uh, wrong way, bro. 180 degrees oh. the wrong way. Oh. Yep. We don't need two cameras on me. Hey, hey, there he is. By the way, you need a good nose hair trimming. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.